what up gangsters <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um i'm so happy to be back today i don't know if you guys noticed but if you follow us on instagram i have a lot of energy and i shouldn't have a lot of energy and i'm very spicy and salty and all the things today i said the funniest joke earlier actually my friend was saying that she wanted to like change her hair and she was like I don't know if I could go dark blah 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 and I literally was like listen we already have enough Bella Swans and <laughs> oh you like gosh. literally cannot and I was like sitting in my office just laughing and I was like that's actually really rude of me to say <laughs> but I was, I was like you're too white like we have too many Bella Swans and I was like wow I'm on one today so um very happy to be back <laughs> recording for the podcast if you get some sass from me what to do baby boo I'm very happy. I think Christmas is, it's because tomorrow's December 1st. That maybe that's what it you is. You are a December lady. Like if you guys are watching us on YouTube right now, <laughs> this bitch is like December Christmas out right now. Grinch, I got Grinch socks on. I got my Grinch shirt on. I got my Grinch cup. I got a Christmas tree behind me. I'm feeling it. Bitch loves Christmas more than her birthday. Which is actually interesting because like literally last week I was actually also part of this week. I was like, man, I don't really have much Christmas spirit right now. Like I don't care to buy any presents. I don't give a fuck to give anyone a single present. I No one needs anything. I don't like, I every time I go to shop, oh, all the Black Friday deals, they weren't any. Like, they sucked. No they one has sucked. any. I know what I was going to talk about. I, I might need Adderall. <laughs> any of <laughs> The deal sucked, but what doesn't suck right now is freaking gas prices. And I want to know if it's a hoax. Mm. Like, what is going on with the gas prices? Okay, Why are what so are cheap? the gas prices down in Salt Lake? When I was just barely driving home, it was two eighty nine. Okay, that's what it is at Sam's Club up here. But for a while up in Logan, it was like closer to four dollars. And then we drive to Brigham City, and it was like closer to three dollars. Like yeah. three, it was like three ten or something down there. We were like, "What the heck is going up up going on up in Logan?" But now we're caught up to you guys. Yeah, I don't understand what's happening. That's literally what I was thinking. I was driving home. I was like, "Is someone punking us?" Like. What? it was literally almost four dollars just barely and then all of a sudden it went down I'm like is this a fucking Christmas gift from God for like a week like what is who who in politics is trying to get someone to vote for them or something like is this here to stay is no our, it's our, not plane tickets gonna start going down? I know right I need that. <laughs> um just live it up because it's election year next year and I feel like shit's gonna go buck ass crazy again I'm ready for it. Sign me up. No, but I'm not. Real, I'm, There's I'm, some <laughs> mystery illness in China again. And I'm like, we are not doing this bullshit again. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I can't predict the future. All I can do is live in the moment. But I didn't have Christmas spirit. I didn't want to buy anything. I barely shopped over Black Friday. There was zero deals. I don't know what, maybe it's just inflation, but I was like, there's nothing that I was like, or also maybe it's just that no one needs really anything in my life. And so it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect gift. I was just like, fuck this. I'm not spending that much money. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what, did you buy anything? No. Well, I bought a few things for me. <laughs> I did okay, not buy I did, any I, gifts. I, I bought, <laughs> I actually bought a lot of stuff for myself because I knew what I wanted. Like I made a list yeah. this year and I was just like, fuck it. I'm just buying it all. And then I was like, well, apparently I'm done for Christmas, but I couldn't find anything for anyone else. I couldn't either. And I really like had high hopes to get Christmas shopping done early this year. And I am just, yeah, I'm I not. Know. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to do. Like my daughter, who should be easy to shop for because she's a child. I haven't been able to find or think of really anything. She has one present right now. And I was like, this isn't going very well. Like what is going <laughs> on? I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, it's hard to shop for people right now for me too. It really yeah. is hard. So I was taking that as I have no Christmas spirit, but I I have Christmas spirit. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Christmas spirit though, I listened to your solo episode this morning and the fact that you had your same Christmas ornaments from when I in 2009, like <laughs> I was... I was getting out of the shower. I was like doing my little squeegee scraper thing, like naked and like, why do I have to do this? Like whatever. And I hear you say that. And I literally stopped dead in my tracks and I like perked up and I was like, 
she did not just say that. And I thought in my mind about how dusty and crusty these fucking ornaments were. And this is why you didn't have Christmas spirit. Like what in the it's world? True. That was, what color were they? They were red and black and silver. Oh my word. Yeah. And like the Buffalo print. So like I had like oh Buffalo print <laughs> like random Buffalo print items. They were not cute. And that's why I was like, I have got to get new ornaments this year. Like I need to stop putting it off. This is ridiculous. And now I'm obsessed with my tree. So we're good. I do need a new tree though. So, um, yeah, I was super surprised by that. Um, I think you're insane. And I thought maybe I might be insane because I just change them whenever I feel like it. Like almost every year I've probably been like, you know, we're going to get new ornaments this year. And I'm always like, okay. And we just go and we pick out some new colors and it's just kind of like the vibe I'm feeling. And I Mm -hmm. could not process the fact that basically since I got out of high school, you had the exact same Christmas decorations. Yep. I buy like new stuff every year to like add to it but yeah like my tree decorations have been the exact same I think this is has to be why you didn't like Christmas it has it definitely plays a role I knew you were gonna say something about that I've just been waiting I was I'm not joking I literally was sitting there like naked like what the fuck is wrong with this person like (laughs) this is exactly the problem I was also very happy to hear that you have joy when you look at your Christmas tree because that's Mm -hmm. the kind of spirit that Christmas brings and it makes me so happy that you feel that like cozy feeling Oh yeah. I've been sitting like by my tree every night and every morning and it's been so, so relaxing and nice. And when you look at it, you're just like, wow. Mm -hmm. It's really cute. (laughs) Yep. I'm actually like sad to take it down. You know what I mean? You'll be ready. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe when we'll this happens, I'm always like, "Yeah, get this shit out of here." <laughs> I want my house back. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I was very, very surprised by that, and I'm very happy that you have changed things, changed your ways. Yeah. Same. I was <laughs> Buffalo print is not for me. It's still like a trend, though. I know it's everywhere at Hobby Lobby that and these damn gingerbreads again if gingerbreads are your vibe go for it but ew Walmart also has a lot of like kitchen gingerbread stuff and that was really weird to me when I stopped by there the other day um but speaking of trends I have to talk about this stupid Spotify thing that comes up every year and everyone shares their fucking music <laughs> I love on it media. I love it but it's like everyone does it on the same day and it's like all you see is like this and then they make some it comes weird comments. out and you get excited here's the thing that I have to ask am I a boomer because I do apple music and now Apple Music does the same thing, but everyone, everyone does Spotify. Like, does listening to Apple Music make me a boomer? Listen, <laughs> when you send me, you make good playlists, okay? I know. Real good. When you send them to me and they're on Apple Music, I'm like, Fuck this girl. Like, why is she listening to Apple Music? We are all on Spotify. I don't know why you keep listening to Apple Music. I don't even Listen. have Apple Music on my phone. What? I um, don't. I am a stan for Apple and everything that syncs with Apple. I love that it just like everything is connected to this one phone and this one Apple situation that I have. And it all. So is Spotify. Spotify is connected to my fucking Facebook. No, it's not. That, yes, it is. Because when I first set mine up, I connected it to my Facebook when Spotify first came onto the scene because I didn't have a freaking Gmail account at the time. I literally so, have, have never put Facebook. In, I don't even know my Facebook information. If I ever get logged either. out of Facebook, I don't know what I'll do. So this I've never here. put Facebook in there. Listen, here's my exact problem. I was like, at one point, I was like, okay, maybe I should switch. I don't know my Facebook password. 
And when I tried to recover my password, somehow it's linked to Wally's cell phone as my backup. And when it sends him the prompt, he doesn't get the prompt. So I can't actually get into my old school Spotify that I used to have that had all of my good music that I once made because I connected it to Facebook because that's how it was set up at the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I don't want to recreate all this stuff. I already have everything in Apple. So it's become like this annoying thing, but also I don't pay for Spotify. So I have the fucking ads and it's not great for me because I pay for Apple. Apple Music. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but no one listens to Apple Music. And when you send me your Apple playlist, I literally go into Spotify and make them myself on there so that I have wow. them on Spotify. I'm stealing my playlist. That's savage. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually do a poll. I was supposed to do polls for one of our episodes. And I don't think I ever did. Sorry. I want to do a poll and find out who listens to Apple and who listens to Spotify. I'm just saying my Spotify wrapped has not changed for four years. I have really got to mix up my music because it is the same top four. Five always changes depending on what I'm feeling for like yoga at the time. But like the top four are always the same. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know what mine would be because this is the first year that Apple's done it. But I go through a lot of phases with my music. I don't generally like stick to like the same thing every year like all throughout the year I go through like a bunch of different phases I think yeah but you saw mine mine's full of lullabies so yeah (laughs) thanks and like (laughs) I won't lie here's a confession Wally and I listen to these Disney lullabies ourselves sometimes if neither of us can sleep and it's like too quiet in our house we'll turn on the Disney lullabies see sound frequency healing there you go Whatever the fuck that means. If it, it's that flute shit that I listened to this morning that you talked about in your episode, that was so unexpected. Like in my mind, I had like a visual of like, this is probably how it's going to be. And then I clicked on it and I was like, okay, this is an experience that you really need to be very open as a human being and patient because I was like shocked. If you had Spotify, I would send you a different playlist. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good for now. But I did you like both. it though? This is why you have a good mood because you started your morning with sound frequency. I didn't start my morning that way. I started my morning with a fuck ton of coffee. But still the sounds help. It was literally 30 seconds. It did not change my day. <laughs> at all any little Um, bit help no I've been really into like the shower cleansing meditation and like affirmations that you can do I don't know if you've seen those Mm -hmm. but I've been like really into those because I I totally believe in like washing away like this energy and stuff while you're in the shower showers are like my ultimate like that's where all of my ideas come from that's where all of my thoughts come from all of my like huh moments and I was like okay I could see this music working and helping enhance that situation but it's gonna take some time it is a little weird it really is but it really is like awesome yeah I don't know um apparently I'm just a boomer that can't handle flutes (laughs) (laughs) maybe Anyways, Um, what's new with you? I feel like I haven't seen you or talked to you in a long time. You know, just the same old, same old, nothing too exciting. Um, Work put up all of our Christmas decorations today, so that was fun. Our little Sally the Slug is back. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that whole story. So that's exciting. And I have no plans this weekend, so that is also exciting um that's a bummer because if you lived here we would have plans I'm, true I've decided I'm officially over you not living here <laughs> I know same same it's a hard life it really is um what am I doing this weekend um you know really not a lot um I think Henley has a busy Saturday she has like a birthday party and then she's going shopping with our friend Tanya um and I'm basically doing nothing I am getting wiring for my hot tub though so you heard it here first everyone bitch is getting a hot tub send all the healing vibes to my legs so I can get in it because as of right now I cannot so that sucks 
Okay, but here's the thing that's crazy to me about this weekend. This weekend is like literally just the kickoff to December. If you don't lock in your presence in the next two weeks, you are essentially screwed. So like if you mm-hmm. have to order anything online, you guys have got to start getting at it because, and when I say you guys, I'm talking about myself because I need to get some ordering done because it's going to go by so fast. Like those two weeks, once you get to the week of Christmas, if you wait till after like the 14th, you will not get that present. So unless it's Amazon, Amazon, I think you can get it a little bit after, but I I don't know. It depends. Some freak shit, man. I ordered this thing from Amazon to help me with the ELF on the shelf. And it was like one of those kits. And I ordered it. I did not know you did that. Yeah, it's on my traditions list to talk about. Uh, Okay, (laughs) all right, all right, we'll Um, get to it. (laughs) But I ordered that thing at like the beginning of October or mid-October. It was like right after your wedding. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get one of these this year. And it still hasn't arrived. And it told me on there, I said, if you don't get this by November 30th, tell us and we'll give you a refund. So now I'm not even going to have this kit that's going to change my life. Dang, that does (sighs) suck. So sometimes that happens. Also, Amazon did not have good deals over Black Friday or Cyber Monday. And I'm a bit pissed about that. There was really no good deals. So we went to Park City and it was packed, like so packed. And I was like seeing all the cars and stuff. I was like, huh, we've done Black Friday in Park City before. And it was not like this bad. So the deals must be really good. No, they were exactly the same as they always are. Like there was really Mm -hmm. no good deals anywhere it was yeah, really like, strange is this because of the inflation and like no one wants to give anybody a deal and they know we have to shop anyways like I can't tell but I'm telling you people are about to have a like a low present item Christmas if mm-hmm. prices and things don't change because I'm not going to buy it full price like that's I'm not going to go buy it if I can't get a deal on something I am a freaking deal snob if I so can't get a deal on it I won't I won't buy it yeah. So am I. So am I. Yeah. It's just been really weird as a diehard black Friday shopper. I'm shocked by this year. <laughs> so did you also survive your first Thanksgiving without me in like years? You know what? No, it was very <laughs> sad. It was very sad. I told Tony, I was like, we are not doing this again. Like we are traveling. It's and, lame, right? Yeah. Like it's just, cause my family's thing is Christmas. Christmas Eve is like our thing. I'll talk about it with my traditions, but my family doesn't really do anything for Thanksgiving because my mom has always worked and now she doesn't work on Thanksgiving anymore, but we've just all kind of done our own thing on Thanksgiving. So it's just like, we don't do anything. And it was just not the same. So that will never be happening again. (laughs) Yeah. I, this year was like a year that I like went to family and we were, I said we should do it, but like not cook all day. Like I will order stuff ahead. I will bring it down. I fucking hate (laughs) cooking. Like I've said it a million times on this podcast. Like my sister doesn't help with the holiday situation and I'm stuck doing it all. The amount of cooking that my sister and I did from Wednesday through even Sunday night was just insane. We were making cookies. We were making snacks. We were making stuff for Thanksgiving. We made this bomb ass meal the next day. Like it was, it was like what I would expect little house on the prairie vibes to be like, it was so (laughs) frustrating to me. So many dishes. And I was just like, listen, this is not who I am. This is not what Mm -hmm. I wanted. And I'm happy that I did it. It was really nice. It was fun to have like that thing, but the meal we made the night after was fire. Like we all loved that dinner so much. And I was like, what did you make? Um, I think it's called, I think some people call it Swiss steak. My family Mm -hmm. calls it Salisbury steak. And it's like, oh, okay. Smashed, like smashed beef with like Mm -hmm. a white gravy. Um, and like, it's basically like you cook, you cook the meat and make it like all crispy. And then you put this white gravy and then you have like whatever sides and like that's something we grew up eating and we wanted to learn how to make it from my grandma and we I made these bomb green beans Ugh, I should send you a picture you'd be proud of them and we loved it we were all like this was the dinner this was what we wanted and I just don't understand why people are wasting their time with Thanksgiving food it's not worth it it's not good you don't even love it the way that you love other foods Yeah, it's so true. Like Tony smoked the turkey for his parents and it took way longer than it 
than was always, expected. It always does. Yeah. And he started it early. Like it was a whole ordeal. And it just was like going to Vegas and just going to the buffet. And then last year, how we just ordered in food and just like warmed it up. That was so chill and so nice and spent, it allowed us to spend more time together yes. than having to cook all day and then do dishes and like, have it be this whole thing. Like, yeah. I think that Thanksgiving is ridiculous too. <laughs> yeah. I still hate it. Um, next year we're going to be together again, traveling. So that's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And you'll have to come to the basketball game with us. Yeah, this time I will go. I think it will be fun. fun. Yeah. What did you do last? Oh, you went and got drunk. You lucky bitch. Yeah, me and Lois went and got drunk. <laughs> I was like, Dave, what where did we doing? go? You went to the ghost donkey. Oh, yeah, we went to the tequila bar. That's right. <laughs> well, next year, Thanksgiving will be better and we'll be in sunshine. And I was really excited because when we first got to Blanding, there was sunshine. And like, I laid out on my sister's like front porch and like sun was just like soaking into my body. And I was like, okay, I if this is how it's going to be, I'll be down. And then it snowed the next day, like so much snow and it was freezing for like two days straight. So um, I prefer to be where there's sunshine and Mm -hmm. no real Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. But here's something that I think is very important to talk about that happened at my Thanksgiving. You know how I am about Thanksgiving. I always want to make people tell me like what they're grateful for when we Mm -hmm. have like big meals like that. Um, And on Robin Arzon, I posted it on my story. Robin Arzon had said in my turkey burn ride, like, what are you grateful for today that you didn't have before? And I was like, this is so crazy. Like I could come up with a million things, Mm -hmm. but like, what, what thing do I want to focus on? You know? So I was like thinking about that. I was like, this is the question I'm going to ask my family. So we all sit down we're like eating and I was like, all right, guys, this is something I do. And I was like, I heard this question today and I'll ask you. And so I said, what are you grateful for today that you didn't have before? And the power that I will say the attitude of gratitude has over you is fucking mm-hmm. insane because these people did not even know what I was asking them. They were like, what is this question? I don't understand. Why are you saying it like this? This doesn't make any sense. And I was like, what the really? fuck? Are you guys Ill- I mean, we, we went to blending. I get it we're illiterate but really (laughs) and I was like it's basically saying like what do you have today right now that you didn't have in the past that you're grateful for and they were like why don't you just say what you're grateful for and I was like okay y'all are dumb let's rewind what are you grateful for and when I tell you the the odds of like it was probably 90 percent out of the group that I had could not come up with something. And they did the default of like, I'm grateful that we're here today as a family. And I was just sitting there and I was like, holy cow. Like if you don't practice this, your brain really can't live in a state of easily trying to see quick things like Mm -hmm. of what you're grateful for. But the second Robin asked that, I was like, oh my gosh, I could come up with a million things that I have right now that I didn't have before that I wished for Mm -hmm. that I wanted. And I didn't have before. And these MFers, could not even come up with anything. I was just sitting there like, okay, this is a huge, like powerful moment for me to like sit and watch and realize that like, if you don't focus on gratitude, you have zero ability to like reach deep within like your soul and understand Mm -hmm. how abundant your life really is. And I was shocked. I was like sitting there and I was like, where's Taylor when I need her? Like no (laughs) one was having this like moment that I was having of like, what is wrong with you guys? It was crazy. It's so true. And I had a moment yesterday, like, cause I have Wednesdays off and I like cleaned my house and I lit candles and I had the fire going and I was getting ready to watch Vampire Diaries, which guys, I am fucking obsessed with this show. But anyways, I was getting ready to watch it. And like, I just like sat on my couch and looked at my fireplace and it just like this insane amount of gratitude just hit me for like my home and just all the trials and all the hard things that Tony and I had been through to get into our home that we love. And just like, cause we were dirt poor when we were first married and it just, I don't know, to see the progression and it just like was such a beautiful moment. And I just sat there for like 15 minutes and just like, I don't know, it is true that people don't pay attention to these things and know that like, you have so much to be grateful for. And you have to find to be grateful that everyone's together eating dinner. But like, that is a default answer. (laughs) Like, Yeah, that's like, I literally was like, do not use this answer. Think of something else. And they were Mm -hmm. like, uh, and they were like, skip me, come back. And I was like, what the fuck? I was literally appalled. I was just sitting there like, damn, 
it's just, I don't know. I I know what you're talking about though, with like those feelings where you just like have this moment and it hits you and your body's like flooded mm-hmm. and, you're just, and it almost makes you want to like have a tear in your eye, but you yeah. don't, you don't get one, but it feels like you should have one yep. baby tear fall yep. of like, damn, it's so crazy. I love that feeling though. I do too. You feel like it, you're just like floating in the air yeah. and like, just like, I don't know, like love and just gratitude is just like coursing through you. And it's a very beautiful feeling. It is insane. And it's just really sad to me that people don't get to have those experiences or they have experiences like this, where it's just like, they, they have so much negative and heavy pressure on them because they haven't taken the step to practice gratitude and they have no idea what they're missing out on you know like they just don't even understand it because it's like to them it's like this is stupid this is woo woo this is whatever and it's like Mm -hmm. no this is like actually facts (laughs) like scientifically proven to increase and change so many things in your life and Mm -hmm. your body and your mind and I was just like wow the power of the attitude of gratitude is totally real and I hope more people can figure that out like one of the things I said because I was like I have a lot that I could say and it's like one thing that's big that stuck out to me I was like because my sister Cha who used to live in Alaska and like we've had this whole journey she was there at my grandma's and I said this is I was like I don't even know how many years it's been since I've had a Thanksgiving where Cha has been here at Thanksgiving or we've shared a Thanksgiving together and I was like and it makes me really, really happy that I have this today because there's been many before that I didn't have this. And I was just, and she was like, oh yeah, that's true. I hadn't even thought about it. And I was just like, how many times do we go through life where people aren't even paying attention to these things? They don't even realize like how cool or impactful something is because they just, they're just going through life. Like I was just like, man, these Mm -hmm. people are these people need a slap in the face and should have had a V8 moment for sure. (laughs) But it's, it's very true. And it's not just like your family. I, at the end of my yoga classes, every single one, I have a moment of gratitude, whether I change it day to day, but whether it's towards yourself or towards something that happened that day. And I've had people ask me at the end of class, like, what am I supposed to be grateful for in that moment? And I'm like, well, is there something that made you feel happy today? And they like have to sit and like think about it. And I'm like, people are just not in touch with their emotions and the things that are going on around them. So that's why I harp on mindfulness so much because people don't just stop to think. And then like when they stop and think and they're like, oh, well, this person at this coffee shop made me happy today. They said they liked my shirt. And I was like, there's your gratitude for the day. Like be thankful that you got a compliment and that it made you feel good, you know? And they're like, oh, okay. Okay. And it's like, what? Like, how do you not think about these things as you go on day to day? So it really is so important to just like take a pause like 30 second pause and think about how you're feeling and what you're grateful for it's so easy to do yet nobody Mm -hmm. does it well and I think that that is what's important to also know like sorry we're just going on a tangent here people but (laughs) um I for sure have days where I cannot for the life of me come up with something that I'm grateful for like I'll be laying in bed trying to fill out my journal and I'm like dude today was fucking like I have nothing that's out of the box that's like the standard answer that I can come up with. And I have to like literally sit there and it almost like, I have to have this moment of like, okay, you need to relax. Like something like your, your day has been heavy. You've been busy, like whatever. And you need to like take a couple breaths, relax, Mm -hmm. stop focusing on that for a second and just like sit here, breathe, look around and like calm your nervous system down because sometimes you get so elevated or so maxed out that you literally can't function. Like your brain is like, and I work really hard to not do standard answers. And Mm -hmm. sometimes I have to work really hard to not default to something that like I say consistently, like there's so many times that I want to say something that's so similar that I'm like, I can't just put this every single time. Like you have to go outside of that. I know you're grateful for it. Don't lose that. But like, just because you didn't write it doesn't mean that you're not grateful. You know, like I have to like literally be like, okay, (laughs) don't give standard answers 
relax. I know you can't come up with anything right now. Your day was shitty. Like, and that's when sometimes I'll be like, you know what? Today was garbage day. I'm real fucking glad I have a garbage man. <laughs> you know, like it's true. Yeah. I have to like, mm-hmm. I have to like really start thinking about other things that happened in the day because it can really be hard to come up with it, especially when you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. And that's, I like that you brought up the garbage thing because I always on the days that I pay bills, I always reframe my mind instead of like being stressed or like if money's tight or something that week, instead of being stressed and focusing on that, like, oh, we don't have enough. I reframe my mind and be like, wow, I'm so grateful that all of my bills are paid. I'm so grateful that I have groceries in my pantry and my fridge that I can eat. Like, I'm so grateful that both Tony and I have jobs that we can fill our cards up with gas and pay our bills. So it's like, just like simple little tweaks you can do with your brain help with gratitude so much. Yeah. Payday is always around payday, especially I'm always like, Uh, my default is always like, damn, I'm so grateful we have a steady paycheck. Like Mm -hmm. the fact that this is always coming in and even if it's tight or even if it's whatever, like the, the check's still there. We still have our jobs. Like it's crazy. Like when you really start to think about things and you're just kind of like, wow, we really have such abundant lives, but so many people just aren't thinking about like Oh my gosh, this is another tangent, but whatever. Here we are catching up, <laughs> sipping, <laughs> sipping on tea, spilling the tea, talking about me being a boomer, whatever you want to do today. Um, I was getting a couple presents. I had a dentist with me yesterday and I like passed a Walmart and I was like, I have to stop here. I need to get this present that Hen- Henley was wanting. <laughs> Sorry, got to calm down. And <laughs> I was like, they're shopping and I saw the thing that she wants from the big man, you know? And I was like, oh, she's not here. She's at school. I can like grab these really quick. I can secure the good and hide them somewhere. It'll be perfect. So I go there and like, she's a spoiled kid. My kids are spoiled. I'm spoiled. Um, and I was like getting it. And I was like, I haven't really figured out what I was doing for it. She wanted these like doll house things that like she can play with her dolls with, but they come in like sets. And I was like, this bitch is getting like the complete set to finish building her like house for her dolls. Like she's getting the bathroom. She's getting the couch and the side table, like all these things. And I was like, is this too much? Like blah, blah, blah. So I grabbed like four or five of them. I think the total ended up com- coming out to like a hundred dollars or something, which is like what I would spend usually on a S present anyways. Um, that could be a dirty, dirty, <laughs> dirty sounding thing. I'm not talking about that S. Um, <laughs> I used to call that, I used to call sex S everybody. Yeah. When I was did. like, literally, I sometimes still do when I was literally like 19, 20. Um, <laughs> no, and- you did that all the way up until I knew you at like 24. So, <laughs> and I still do it. It's fine. <laughs> um, anyways, so I was like walking around getting some other stuff that I needed and, I don't know what it was about the day, but there was just a bunch of people there that like, you could tell they had less than like, they, they were there with their kids and like one lady, the God, now that I'm thinking back on it, there was so many moments like this shit. It was so rough. And I'm like in the line to check out, but someone was ahead of me and they were like, literally just buying like, like almost like the stuffing things that you put in your, your trees that are like little sticks and they like Mm -hmm. make it look full. She's like with two kids little kids like at least five and under two of them and she's handing them to the person one by one to see what her total was and I was just sitting there like first I started to get annoyed and I was like dude what the fuck is going on like that was my first thing because I didn't understand what was going on and I was like why is this like she had nothing in her cart really like why is this taking so long I like look up and I like calmed myself down looked around and saw that was happening I was like damn this like in my mind I was like I should just go buy these for her right now but I I hesitate to do things like this when kids are around because I don't you know how parents are like that Mm -hmm. can be like a really uncomfortable moment for them Mm -hmm. and I didn't want them to feel like I grew up with people like kind of pitying us a little bit because of our parents and like their drug addict stuff and living with our grandparents and so sometimes for me it's triggering of like handouts are really hard people giving me things are hard Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. But like, I just had like this moment of like super sad empathy and sympathy for them. And then the little kids started pointing at like the presents in my cart, like the doll stuff. They were like, like, oh, I want that so bad. Like, look at all those things in her cart. And I was just sitting there like, Jesus fucking Christ, like this is my nightmare. Like 
Henley is so lucky. And I'm like oh. looking at these kids and their clothes. And I was just like, damn, this is like a rough moment. And I need to figure out how I can like give back some more of this. Like I already like to give back this season, but like it was another one of those times where I was like, damn, I've got to be better about doing this. And so I was really sad. So I check out and then I'm leaving and I'm loading my stuff in my car and I pass another group of like a mom, her two kids and her, she's trying to tell her kids, like, if I buy you everything right now, like you won't get anything for Christmas. And like, you have to remember like Christmas is coming. And she was just like, I know like the little girl saying that she's like, I know, but at Christmas, like, I don't even get these things. I don't get all these oh, things. So like, can't sad. we just buy it right now? And I'm sitting there loading again, all this fucking shit that I'm like, here's for my spoiled ass kid. And this kid walks by again, a different one. And they walk past my car and she was like, see, that person's getting those toys. And I was just sitting there. Oh my gosh, no. So I don't even know what the point of where I was going at, like with all of this. But basically, if you don't sit and like think about how abundant your life really can be and if you don't have moments where you see things like this happening and you're not like immediately like holy shit I have got to like give more do more like how Mm -hmm. can I like like anything if you don't feel any of those feelings you are not living in a state of abundance you're not even aware of it because you're always thinking you have less than you're not grateful for the shit you have you're not seeing it like that you're just kind of like you'd probably be me when I first got triggered of like why the fuck is this line taking so long And then you would continue to be angry and you wouldn't be paying attention to the fact that there's other things happening around you. You'd be focused on like the negative stuff that you're feeling. So I think that's what I was trying to say is like, if you don't live in a state of abundance like that and realizing how much abundance and gratefulness that you can have, you Mm -hmm. really miss out on situations like that. And it kind of just brings more of that your way. Yeah, it's true. And that's like a big part of why I do the angel tree every year, because the things that like the kids, I don't even know how they set it up. I don't know if the parents write them or the kids write them or what exactly it is. But the fact that I get this little child who their needs are coats and warm clothes, like that is just so heartbreaking to me to think that there's kids out there who do not have these things that we so easily have. And it just, uh, it breaks my heart. It really it really, really breaks my heart. A few years ago, me and my mom and my sisters did like a sub for Santa because a girl that oh my, my God. I know yeah. exactly what you're about to talk about. That shit fucking broke me. <laughs> yeah. My mom knew a girl that worked at a school and this family did had nothing. And this mom or the dad, I don't even remember the specifics. If I'm being honest, one of them had cancer and was dying and was they the had the mom. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. And they, they didn't know if the mom would make it for Christmas, make it to Christmas. And it was just, it was so heartbreaking. And so many people donated money and we got them. So we actually were able to do two families with how many, how much money was donated. And just like, there was multiple times that we would be like shopping for the stuff. And one of us would just start crying because it was like, we were buying the basics. Like we were buying toothbrushes and socks and coats and gloves and hats. And it was just like these basic things that when we buy them, we don't think twice about it. It's just like, like I just bought a new coat this weekend and I was like, Oh, I need a new coat. Like, Oh, it's a hundred dollars. Oh, well, like get me a new coat. And like, People don't have that. And that just, it just really like puts in perspective. And every time I pick a child from the angel tree, it just shifts everything into this perspective of like, we have so much, we have so much. And it's so sad that people out there don't. And this, with this family, it was so sad that like, they didn't know if their mom would make it to Christmas and she didn't make it to Christmas. And it's, uh, it's just heartbreaking to me. It just is so sad. It's if I had like, if I could be like a rich person, when I'm a rich person, let me rephrase that. (laughs) Relax, Shelby. When you're a rich ass bitch (laughs) and you're living large, you're going to do this. But also if I had a magic wand and I could like, I always say like, I want to like conquer the world. Like when people like ask me about myself, like at work things and stuff, I'll be like, I don't know, like I'm going to take over the world. Like that's just my mentality. And if I could have a wish my wish would be that I could save all the children like Mm -hmm. the fact that there's just so many children out there in these cycles and these sad situations like I would just wave my magic fairy wand and like 
all kids would have blessings and love and kindness and they'd be out of bad situations and they wouldn't be abused. Like I have the most tender heart for children. Like Mm -hmm. it still is there for like older people a lot. Like I'll see like certain people on the street sometimes and like get this almost like the opposite of what we feel when we look at like our fireplaces or whatever we were talking about earlier that like give you these feelings of like, oh my gosh, I see them. And I get this like immediate, like different energy over my body of just like, uh, and it happens sometimes for adults, but for children, (laughs) for kids, that shit, I will, I wish I could just save them all. And like, Mm -hmm. it's just insane to me. It breaks my heart. I want to figure out how to be better about giving back and doing things like this more. Cause it always hits me really hard at Christmas. Like Mm -hmm. it's so United States, American people of us, because Mm -hmm. we only think about it for some reason around Christmas time, because it's like the theme. And it's like, how can we be better when you guys did that for that family? I was like, if more people knew how to have access to these things, we, so many more people would be helping because I think that's what it takes. It's like knowing about it and being like, okay, I can rally some people to do this. But like, if you don't have a connection, if you don't have an in, it's really hard to know what to do. The angel tree makes it so easy. And I'm totally Mm going to do that. That's what I need to do this weekend. Yeah. The angel tree makes it so easy, but you're right. After I posted my stories yesterday, because so many people didn't even know about the angel tree, but, um, after I posted those yesterday, I was like, what can we do to bring this into the rest of the year? Like, it's great that this happens right now, but like, what about the rest of the year? Like, what can we do that can bring this same sort of energy and spread it throughout the year? I've thought about like calling some schools sometimes and like paying off people's lunch balances, but that's like the only thing I can come up with. So if anybody has ideas of ways that we or you or people could do service throughout the year, please let us know because I really want to extend that throughout the other months. Yeah, when I I posted on my stories about apparently if you're not following us on our stories you miss everything guys. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously that's and it's legit effects. Um, <laughs> I for work went and did this like service project where we built like these um, meal kits for um, kids that don't have like food at home and so they can come get these meal kits and their family can have Thanksgiving. And when I was there, they were talking about all the things that they do, and one of the things that they had said was that like people will volunteer their time and go help with like reading and stuff. And I immediately thought about you. I was like, this is like one of the things I've always felt like your calling is, is like helping kids that just need, like you have this energy that I feel like they need. And I was like, Taylor needs to come read with these children. I was like, I gotta get this bitch a business card from these people. Like she needs to do that. I personally don't have the patience for those things. Like I couldn't do like Wally could do it. Wally's the one that volunteers for Henley's shit at school. Like I can't do those things, Mm -hmm. but there's places in like Salt Lake and stuff that are doing that. And I was like, how fun would it be instead of like us doing our normal, like wine night where we sit and eat bougie cheese and drink wine. What if we all just went to this place and help them pack kits? Because on the weekends, they also, on the weekends, they also like have it so that kids can pick these up from schools they build these kits during the week that are like a bag of groceries for the weekend and I had told Henley about going there and I was like yeah because like there's kids that like when they leave school for the weekend they don't have food and I was like and then also when you guys have your long breaks I was like they don't get any food like school lunch is all they get like school breakfast and lunch if they don't go to school they don't get food and she was like in the back of my car like what the fuck is going on with the world like she and I was like okay I've got to get her involved like yeah, we should do that. Where it's like, we are so privileged and we have the ability to give back. We're just not intentional about it. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I had a couple of people message me of like some things. I'll have to like, you and I have to sit and talk about it. If we can organize yeah. some stuff like once a quarter. Yeah, that, we should. Like, we should totally do that. That would be fun. Yeah, we definitely should do that. Because it's definitely children. something that I want to do outside of December. So, yes same because every December I'm like why don't I do this more you're such Mm -hmm. an asshole (laughs) it's just hard to find things and I think a lot of times like if families are struggling they don't want to it's embarrassing to them Mm -hmm. you know and so it's hard to say like reach out and be like I need help with something so I just think it's hard to find the things I think so too. And I think if you're not in the Mormon church, especially here in Utah, mm-hmm. you don't hear about these things happening to families. The Mormons hear about it because people will go to the church because it's yeah. a big organization. They'll go there 
to get help. And then that's how families hear about it. But if you're not part of that, you don't get the information, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's very, very true. Well, we went on a very long (laughs) tangent. Do you want to talk about our traditions after that sad (laughs) and heavy topic? (laughs) Yeah, everybody just practice your gratitude, okay? Come on. It's be better. (laughs) All right, let's talk about traditions. (laughs) all right (laughs) obviously Shelby and I's tradition is to spend Thanksgiving together having in-depth gratitude talks (laughs) it's so true listen we don't talk shit about people we're not gossipers but we'll sit and talk a lot about the universe and gratitude and how to be better human beings (laughs) it's so true (laughs) okay so I already mentioned it um I don't really I okay Thanksgiving I guess is considered the holidays fuck that I hate Thanksgiving um I like to go out of town for Thanksgiving that's it Thanksgiving's over not talking about it anymore moving on to Christmas the happy time um one of the biggest traditions I have is setting up my Christmas tree watching the Grinch I have to watch the Grinch no one can turn anything else on it's the Grinch this year I did not have my wine glass out because I set my Christmas up very early So I didn't use my Grinch wine glass, but usually it's like my Grinch wine glass, the Grinch movie, and like full on Christmas. The cartoon or the Jim Carrey one? Jim Carrey one. Really? I'm the cartoon Grinch. I love the cartoon one. one? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Nope. Not the (laughs) old one and not the new cartoon one. Only the Jim Carrey one. I love the Jim Carrey one, but for some reason, me and my sisters used to love watching the cartoon Grinch, though, like the old one. So it just brings like happy memories with that. I like the Grinch book, like the actual Dr. Seuss book. That's like basically what the old one looks like, I would say. Um, But no, fuck that. I'm not watching that. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, that's my first tradition. That's like the kickoff to christmas and like what i do so my first tradition is i set up my tree and my christmas stuff tony he will help occasionally with just like the tree and the ornaments but everything else like i prefer to do it by myself i'm the same with halloween decorations i don't like help with it because i feel like he's just like in the way and so space yeah Yeah. And so I do that. And then same with Halloween and Christmas. I do the same exact thing. I make chicken noodle soup, homemade chicken noodle soup. And I watch the nightmare before Christmas because that movie can be watched all the way until New Year's and that's it. So October to New Year's, I watched that movie probably 15 times. That's crazy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I was going to turn it on the other day for Henley. I think she's at the point where she actually doesn't like it anymore. Thank God. Because she went through like a period for like a year where she was like, I think I like this movie. I think she's decided it sucks. So I'm very pleased that because sucked. I was like, I was trying to cook or something. And I was like looking to see if anything Chris was on. And it was on us and it was on. And I was like, oh, do you want to watch this stupid movie? Uh, Cause I would be paying <laughs> attention. And she was like, no. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> So luckily that I don't think we'll be playing at my house this year, but I like the idea of like setting up stuff with a movie, something that makes you feel like into it. Um, I also am the same way. Wally will fluff my tree. He'll bring up all my stuff and Mm -hmm. Henry will like help me get it out. And I've been trying to let her like put stuff out and then I have to like move it. But Christmas this year she I think she knew like there's too much I can't understand this um Mm -hmm. but Wally will always fluff my tree for me I try to get him and Henley to put all the decorate decorations on them and then I'll like move them because Mm -hmm. that's how lazy I am I don't like fluffing trees I don't like to fluff them either I don't like to put the tree together and then fluff it so that's the extent of Tony's job with the Christmas decorations and then I just do the rest I think honestly too for me like if people are trying to help me put decorations up it doesn't work like sometimes I I usually put them in the same space but there's it's a bit overwhelming and it's kind Mm -hmm. of like what am I feeling does this work do I want to switch anything up and you can't do it when someone's like oh you want me to put this here you want me to put this here yeah no it's too stressful it's a slow process you relax just like what the feelings are you just do it Mm -hmm. which it's so funny because at the summit I taught at at the retreat there was a girl there that talked about like 
how organizing and cleaning your home can make you feel like peace and like the different emotions that are connected with your home. It was so interesting, but it made me think about decorations. And that's why my decorations, like a part of the reason why my decorations took so long this year, because I was trying to like keep everything even like I was really had that in mind of like, what makes me feel happy? What seems to bring like the most balance to things? And it really makes a big difference. Like when I, next year I'm wanting to buy like new furniture and redo a bunch of stuff in my house. And I'm definitely going to bring that aspect in because it really yeah. does make a big difference. Yeah. Especially if you have OCD. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> the next thing I would say is something that is a tradition for me. Um, it's actually something that I just recently kind of changed. We always had a tradition growing up that Christmas Eve, we would open a present and it was always pajamas. And I was doing the same thing for my kids and they would open their pajamas on Christmas Eve, but they were fucking Christmas pajamas. And so I think it was about two, maybe three years ago. I finally was like, this is, I don't even like this word asinine. It is ridiculous why am I giving them Christmas pajamas on Christmas Eve and Christmas is ending they could wear them the whole entire month like what is going on so I've changed it to they still get their Christmas pajamas but they get to open it like on day one two or three of December um normally I would do like day one if I'm like prepared Jaden's are not going to be here in time because that's a whole different thing he doesn't really want them or need them but or participate I'm just forcing it um <laughs> but that's one thing that I is I would say is a tradition like I do kind of want to bring back the like night before Christmas like gift thing and one thing that I've been trying to do is like a family game the night of Christmas Eve that we can do but we're always so busy that we don't end up actually playing it so this year I want to change that to something I'm not sure what it would be but I like the idea of a night before Christmas something but it will not be Christmas pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Um, Christmas Eve is my family's thing and it is my favorite. We actually, since my sister lives in St. George, we tried last year to do it at a different time. And all of us were like, no, this is not happening. So my sister's coming up here again because we just love Christmas Eve so much. So my mom makes like a roast dinner. We have like good mashed potatoes and salad and just like all this good food. We all open up our gifts. Um, DJ, my brother-in-law, he loves to like make cocktails so we always have a Christmas cocktail and then we have a giant family uno game like me and my sisters get very intense with uno so it ends up mostly just being me and my sisters but we try to make it all the family to have like this big uno tournament and then we play a game called 7-eleven that we just get so loud and crazy with and we're doing a kids version this year so we'll have a kids and adults and I'm really nervous that the kids aren't going to get it and they're going to fight about who gets the prizes. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so that's what we do on Christmas Eve. And it's so fun. You guys are going to run into the issue Crystal and I always run into where you try and separate the kids and adult stuff. And then the kids don't, kids are just too involved with adults these days. Like yeah. when I grew up, it was not this way. And the kids just will trickle in and they'll be like, no, I'm playing. And then the parents have this guilt and they're like, well, Henley's. I guess it's Henley's now. Like, fuck, Jesus. <laughs> well, what we what we did last, not last year, the year before, we opened up the gifts before. So then that way the kids were entertained with their new toys so that we could play our game and they didn't yeah. even pay two seconds of attention to us. That's good. Um, If you need to stop by my house for some to-go mashed potatoes, let me know because <laughs> your mom might make good mashed potatoes but they don't beat mine <laughs> you do have the good butter pockets maybe i'll sign up for the mashed potatoes <laughs> oh by. i do have a funny story so you know how you and i just love cheese and like we always just have cheese for everything so one I year my mom just ate cheese right before we recorded yeah, two yeah. slices and a string cheese <laughs> So my That's mom my assigned me dessert and I was like, okay. So like I went to the store and I saw this like delicious looking brie cheese thing. And I got like this cranberry or raspberry jam. It was something with like some cinnamon crackers. Like that's a oh, dessert. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. And I brought it and all of them were like, what the hell is this? And I was like, it's the dessert. And they were like, it's cheese. I was like, yeah, but cinnamon crackers and the jam, like it makes it sweet. Like that is a dessert. And my mom was like, I thought you'd bring like cookies or something, not this big old cheese wheel. <laughs> And I was like, what the Have heck? Have never so, heard of cheesecake? That's exactly. A dessert too. And now I will never get a signed dessert again. And every time anything, my mom's all, well, Taylor's not bringing the dessert. She'll bring cheese. And I'm like, it was a dessert. <laughs> Listen, you don't need dessert if you have cheese in your life. Exactly. Exactly. That's funny. Um, I will say, adding on to that, Taylor has brought this game into our life because we have, I don't know how many years it's been now, but we've been doing kind of like a family Christmas thing that's, I mean, Taylor's basically my sister. So she's my family and she's now Crystal's family and Crystal Skin's family. Like that's just <laughs> who we are. Um, she's my chosen family and we have done family Christmas like what three years now this Mm -hmm. might be our fourth I can't even remember yeah so we have now started playing this game but I would say like another tradition that I'm saying now is like forever is like our family Christmas at some point in the middle where we do like we get together we are in our cozies we eat food we play a game we play this present game that Taylor taught us. We then do whatever the fuck we want. We do karaoke. Karaoke, karaoke will probably yeah. always be there. Yeah. And it's just like. The do you... game's always on during dinner. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if you don't have like a thing like that before Christmas, you need to do it. Like the vibes mm-hmm. are just so good. And like bring, make it with people that like make you feel at home. Like it's just you can't you can't even change it it's like the best feeling ever yeah and last year crystal got us all like matching pajamas which was so cute and I still like they're still my favorite like pajama pants to this day but that was so it was so fun family Christmas is so fun yeah it's like if you don't do that yet you should do it um another tradition I have is the elf (laughs) (laughs) and Although I don't want the belief in the big man to go away, I think this could be potentially our last year. She's just a very intelligent child and kids ruin it. Like kids are constantly saying stuff because they've it's been ruined for them or whatever. They're just dicks. Probably that. Um, she's still, she, you can tell she's skeptical, but she's still like has that innocence and she's believing in it. It could be the last year. I will say, although I don't want her to not believe, I cannot wait for her not to believe. So I do not have to deal with this motherfucking elf. I am so, so shocked that you do the elf. I I, had no idea that you did it. And, oh. I mean, I'm really basic about it. People, God, the people on the internet that make moms feel like terrible moms they really go hard for this thing Mm -hmm. and there's been times where like we'll do something cool it's still nowhere near as cool the problem here's the thing that's wild I didn't even realize today was the last day of November this week has just been insane I know it has I didn't realize tomorrow was December 1st and when I picked her up from school she was like is Elfie sugar socks here and I was like the fuck I was like is it December 1st like shit red alert um, and she was like, no, he's supposed to be here. Like, it, like some people have already, some people, Courtney Kardashian, to be specific, his, hers came before Thanksgiving. Doesn't she have a newborn baby? And like a million kids, they all get their own ELF. And I just don't understand. I don't, I don't understand how this has happened to parents around the world. I don't like this as a tradition but it's a tradition and I hope it ends soon, but also it comes with a very sad part. (laughs) But he's a tradition now. How old were you when you stopped believing? I don't remember. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I was old, but I had younger sisters. So I think that played a part in it, but I was in sixth grade and I feel like that's really old to still be believing. Honestly, I would say it was probably close to that. Like really, like it was around that time when like the Easter bunny and all those things like started to go away. And it was because my grandpa had died. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that is why I remember it the most is not because of the death part necessarily, but it reminds me about like the phase that my family was in. 
I was the youngest child and at Easter time the each kid got the opportunity to hide baskets for the other kids and it was finally my turn to hide the baskets and then the theory was I don't know where this came from the theory was that you get to hide the baskets and then the bunny goes and fills them and so you get to hide them for your Mm. siblings and then the bunny finds them around your house and like filled them up and it was finally my year to hide the freaking baskets it was my turn the first time I was able to do it and that was the year that they were like oh by the way this isn't a thing anymore oh no (laughs) so I think that's what then triggered it to maybe the whole conversation happened with the big man and I don't remember but I don't actually remember a conversation Stopping. being like, hey, is this real? Blah, blah, blah. The Easter Bunny one really fucking pissed me off because I missed my yeah. shot. Yeah. So I think it was around that time. But when my grandpa died, I was in fifth grade. So I was like 10. 10 yeah. 11. So I guess we were. I mean, I feel like that's old now. I feel like kids are not believing a lot sooner. Oh, yeah. She was asking like two years ago. Really? Yeah. What is so crazy to me is I, I'm, I'm a snoop. I do not like secrets. I do not. So I would snoop around and find my presents and like the presents that were from the big S I would find them and I would convince myself that like, oh, my mom was just holding them for him. Like they're still from him, like whatever, even though every year I saw the presents from him and I still convinced myself. And then when I was in sixth grade, I, this kid told me that he wasn't real and I cried and I came home and I asked my mom and I remember my mom was like, I thought you knew. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> I think that's honestly I think that's gonna be how she's gonna be where she I think deep down she knows Mm -hmm. she questions things like this all the time not even just with this person um but I think she wants to believe and I think you probably were the same where it's like no Mm -hmm. I love this feeling it's so exciting I love the excitement I want to believe um for Wally he specifically remembers he remembers finding the wrapping paper in a closet and his mom was like Mm -hmm. well cats out of the bag she could have lied but she didn't you know Mm -hmm. for me I'm like since he told me that I'm like throw that shit away tonight in the trash you can never see this wrapping paper (laughs) yeah what are your thoughts about because it's like a thing now maybe it's just up in Cache Valley but it's a thing now for parents to tell their kids and then is Henley right there can she hear me? I have headphones. Oh, okay. I was like, oh <laughs> crap. Um, it's a thing to like tell your kids that it's not real because parents don't like to lie to their kids. Okay, so I haven't heard a lot of that, but I have heard this of like parenting. I I can see parts of that because I posted something the other day of like inquire with your kid while they're asking if it really comes down to it, like it is better not to lie to them. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Honestly, Mm -hmm. I don't feel like that fucked me up. I would say a million other things fucked me up and them lying to me about those situations Mm -hmm. did nothing for me. It doesn't make me not trust anything. It doesn't make me like the, the innocence I think brings a better perspective for children over not being lied to over that situation. Um, one thing that I would say with that though, is like, the differences in families of like what the big man does and what happens at other people's houses. Like I was very aware of that early on because I was like, dang, I hadn't really thought of this. Mm -hmm. And so ours has always been like the one present, but some families it's like, everything is that. And so it's just like this really weird thing, parenting this type of stuff, especially with Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Really weird. Well, and I'm sure it's confusing for kids who don't get as much. And then, you know, kids come to school and they're like, oh, yeah, I got this, this and this. And the kid that didn't get as much is like, oh, I only got one thing or I got nothing or I got some socks, you know, like that is sad. But I don't I think you should protect your I'm not a parent, so I probably shouldn't weigh in. But I feel like kids are just forced to grow up so fast in this day and age. I feel like anything that keeps them a kid full of like wonder and excitement and imagination should stay as long as possible. I don't think that you should be telling your kid when they're like five, you know, yeah. like I I don't see it as lying. I see it as just keeping your kids kids. I totally agree with that. Um, moving on. I 
would say another tradition I feel like that we've created that's in a tradition to me now is like getting brunch and going shopping mm -hmm. like with you I think that if you have a friend going shopping and doing something like that is super fun bring your spouses if you want this year Tony and Wally we've invited them I think we won't regret it because they can go shop and we can do our own thing mm -hmm. and then Tony can drive you home shout out to Tony and Wally can drive <laughs> me home but like it's just really fun sometimes if you need like the extra girl time but like last year we did it with just Henley and I think it was nighttime and it was just mm -hmm. like really, really, I don't know. It brings like this essence of magic and fun. Um, to me, that's a tradition now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would also say like a girls get together with our favorite things. We did it a few years in a row and then we stopped because there was a bunch of, <laughs> well, we did drama. it for Valentine's day <laughs> before. I don't think we've ever, I think this will be the first year no. we've done it for Christmas, right? We, I have, no, we've done. Oh, it like we did a second one on Valentine's day. We, okay. That's right. Yeah. We did like a couple, I think it was like almost three years straight that we did a something and did like presents is either white elephant girls like one was mm -hmm. at a friend's house um like just different things um and we did some type of like get together as like friends and exchanged gifts either white elephant our favorite things then we had a bunch of drama with like friendships and so we stopped doing that I would say and this year we're bringing it back and to me it's one of those things that I've always loved like mm -hmm. it's just like a fun thing I will say it does add a little bit of pressure gift wise because ours is coming up and I have zero clue what I'm gonna do um and it can be difficult if you don't have like additional funds but I think you can find your own versions of it you know like yeah. it could be like I don't know you don't even have to give a gift just like get together with people and do something that like I don't know make a yeah. tradition with people that are your people if people don't know what we're talking about we do like a favorite things brunch or dinner and this year we're doing it kind of fancy because I really wanted a Christmas dress Same. so yeah we're gonna go to like a cute bar we're going to Lake Effect to have dinner and then you get like your favorite things and you gift them to your friends so like how my last episode was a bunch of my favorite things those would be like little gifts that I would give to my friends and it's yeah. really fun to like I don't know. I feel like you get to know the other person more intimately to me. Well, it seems. And I think it like makes a fun theme. Like it's so hard to come up with presents a lot. Like I would say gift giving has gotten really hard, especially as we've gotten older, which is so sad to say. Mm -hmm. Um, It's gotten harder because we have such abundant lives. Like we buy ourselves whatever we want. So you want to give them something that is special and makes them feel like excited, but it's also like the bitches have everything that they need. And so <laughs> yeah. it's really, it can be hard. So if you think about it of like, these are things that I love, maybe they don't like them. They can re -gift them. I don't care, but you kind of compile that. And then you gift one bag to each person. And then you also receive the same things from other people. And then you get to go home with like a bunch of random goodies. And it's just like really cool. Yeah. It's really fun. It's really fun. Um, the only other tradition I would say I have is I pick a theme for my wrapping paper and I talked about it on a couple episodes ago. I pick like a color vibe. I pick like a feeling that I'm feeling I want to see under my tree. And that is a tradition that I have. It's not necessarily my family's. It's just basically me being a fucking dictator saying no other wrapping paper can be used besides these colors, these wrapping papers that I bought these bows, these tags, all of it. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's a tradition or just me being me, but to me, it's a tradition and it brings me a lot of peace and joy. Okay. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Um, my last thing is it kind of is Tony's, but it's something that he loves and I just have gotten so used to it. So on Christmas Eve, when we get home from my mom's house, he puts me, he tells me to like go into the bedroom and he will stay out and he will watch Christmas movies and he will wrap all of the gifts for me and he loves it. And so then when we wake up in the morning, we open up gifts together. Um, and then we have just a very lazy Christmas day. We always watch why him Shelby I thinks can't. that we just like sit and have sex all day, which that's not true. <laughs> it is true. I it's started not. from laughing really loud in the microphone, but this is 1000% a fucking it's fact. Really we I literally, we watch Why Him, which is my 
favorite Christmas movie of all time. I know James Franco is a creep, but this movie is so fucking funny. It's it's not, I don't, it's Christmas, but not Christmas. Like, it's so funny. So we drink champagne all day. Sometimes we get stoned. Sorry, mom. We watch Why Him, and we just, like, watch funny movies all day and then take a really long nap, and that's it. That's all we do. We don't have a weird sex fest uh, all day. You guys, you guys fuck. You already admitted <laughs> to me you guys fuck. Sorry, Taylor's mom. Sorry, Tony. Um, you guys do. And in my mind, because you guys sleep naked, I just imagine you guys being like Adam and Eve walking around naked all day, like <laughs> ready to go whenever you want in your element. Like this is the visual me as your child has come up with that is how you spend your day because you guys act like it's so sacred like no one can interrupt us we don't want to talk to anyone we don't want to spend our day with anyone we're busy being naked fuckers like that is literally the storyline stop it i don't care what your truth is this is this is my truth That does not happen. I promise you. Yeah, we have sex on that day, but like we also have sex a decent amount. So like it's what it I'm is. so red right now. So Me red. again as your child I'm so uncomfortable <gasps> by your disgusting pervert Christmas day. Anyways, and then my own tradition is on the day after Christmas. I take down all the decorations. I deep clean my house, put any presents away and just like have this beautiful reset. And I love it so much. This year I took, cause we don't have the day after Christmas off at work. And I literally took it off. And my coworker's like, why are you taking that day off? And I was like, because I need to clean my house. And she was like, what? And I was like, I really look forward to it. After months and months of having decorations through Halloween and Christmas, like, I love that reset. Yeah, I, okay, I do have one more. Christmas day, I spend the day, we like to spend the day with like all the food, we are lazy. We drink champagne. We, we, my sister has moved away. So it's just me this year again. Um, hey, we might come. We might pause our sex fast. Please keep your clothes on. Um, We always buy the new Mario game or some kind of Nintendo Switch game. We eat all day. We drink champagne all day. We have breakfast. And it's just like the funnest vibes. We play games at random times. While he's always doing a puzzle. It's like just this like cozy different thing if it snows we like to snowboard in the backyard and like I'm lit on champagne so it's a perfect idea to me so Christmas day is always something like I traveled one year at Christmas day and it was like the worst like we had to transport presents it wasn't the same and if you have kids I would say stay home until you and once the big man is not believed in my ass will be on vacation (laughs) <laughs> for sure day, day night of christmas i'm on a flight guaranteed <laughs> that's my vibe um tony's tradition for wally also is he gets wally a new puzzle every year and he's already got it this year and it is so funny and i cannot wait for wally to see wally doesn't listen right no okay he good doesn't, he doesn't like who it was a podcaster <laughs> um yeah his puzzle this year is really hilarious yeah, I I don't know. Christmas Day is like I'm really excited. My sister's moving back next year and I'm excited to have that feeling again because it was like this glimmer of excitement that I had because normally that we were always alone. And then it was like they were here and it made it really, really fun. And it's just a vibe. I think one of Jaden's friends who like doesn't have like a great home life he's gonna come spend the day with us too and like that's how I want my house to always be is like come here it's gonna be like a big family hug and I fucking hate hugs (laughs) but you don't on Christmas I will always give a hug on Christmas yeah you will I was like every family Christmas I've always gotten the biggest hug from you (laughs) I've actually been giving out hugs lately like I don't know really oh my gosh you're changing I gave a couple hugs the other day and I was like why am I hugging people I thought that while I did it you're getting more in tune (laughs) with your feelings I think I feel pressured that I'm supposed to hug actually (laughs) no um and then the only other thing I have is New Year's Eve I don't really have a tradition I'm not a go out girly I don't want to go out on New Year's I've never 
had that desire. I don't think I'm a go out person in general. I always wanted to have a, I want to have a party at your house and like be cozy and like chill. I don't like the rowdiness new year's Eve. I don't want to go somewhere. Um, unless I'm on vacation, I would be down for that. Like doing something at like a resort for sure. Um, I, this year I'm starting a new tradition where we're going to make vision boards and I'm very, very, very excited for that. Everyone's going to have to bring a poster board. They're going to need to grab a couple magazines on their way. And it's just going to be like a really cool thing. And also I like to just get drunk, have fun, have fireworks and just like be cozy with like people you trust and love and bring in the new year. And then also we always talk about it. I set goals. I reflect on my year, but like, I don't do that on new year's Eve. I do that somewhere in the middle of like all of the chaos. Yeah. Same. But yeah, New Year's Eve is like, it's cool. It's fine. I like that it's a champagne holiday. Don't buy your cooks. I know it's going to go on sale. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, Chardonnay, Chardonnay's on sale right now for like another week. There's a ton of Chardonnay's on sale in Utah right now. And there is a Magnum champagne. I think it's La Marca. It's on mm. sale for $32. And normally, oh my gosh, that's cheap. Yeah. Normally their small one, like the regular size is like $19 itself. So La Marca's on sale. Chardonnay is on sale. I think it's literally about to end next week though. It's on sale for Thanksgiving. And then your champagne's going to go on sale. Do not buy the cooks. Buy something different. Don't buy Andre and don't buy cooks. Yeah, we should. I actually need to go. I'm in charge of the drinks for family. Christmas, so I need to go to the liquor store. I'm gonna do like a little rating thing on our How podcast. How do you need to go to the liquor store? You have so much left. I thought because I do, but there's one specific thing that I need because I'm making something that is so cute, and I okay. can't wait. Well, that's so. fine. I've actually, um, when I'm allowed to do stuff again, when my therapist that is no longer my therapist gives me permission after the new year, I have on my list to start doing like wine reviews or like showing you stuff at the store. So when I go to the liquor store, I'm gonna start having like a whole thing on our podcast because I feel like the people need to know this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely do one for the champagnes because you do not want to be showing up on new year's with cooks or Andre. Andre is better than cooks, but we don't like either. And there is definitely ones in that same price point that are way better. And I will also add to this. If it has a flavor, like it's peach, it's Mm -hmm. pineapple. It's not good. Yeah. Full of sugar not real you will get a hangover let me juice you some fresh ass juice because it's amazing and don't buy the flavored stuff but i will also add barefoot is also don't get barefoot barefoot andre and cooks people say they don't like champagne it makes them sick it makes them cry they don't like it it's not their thing it's because you're not drinking the good stuff and when we make a reel about the good stuff there's gonna be a big old x right over the cooks Mm -hmm. no yeah ma'am yep Anyway, should we do our asking for a friend? Yes. This is a good one. Oh, you want me to read it? (laughs) I'm looking at you like, oh, you ready? (laughs) I'm not ready. Let me pull it over. I know it off the top of my head. Hashtag asking for a friend. Do I need to make a treat? I think is what it said for my neighbors or a gift. I think think it said a gift. Do I need to give a gift? I'll just look it up. I'll just. I'll just look at it. Hold on. Yeah, they do. Mine don't. <clears throat> I'm not a Mormon. I don't get gifts. Or okay. Hashtag asking for a friend. Wow, we butchered it. <laughs> do I need to make something for my neighbors for Christmas? Uh, okay. A craft or a treat or a gift. It could be anything. Um, No, fuck neighbors. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Growing up, I lived in a neighborhood that everyone was super close and my mom and my dad would both stress out about what we were giving as the neighbor gifts because it was like a Mormon neighborhood. So sorry to talk trash about Mormons, but Mormons like to one up each other sometimes. And that's how the vibe was of like, everybody needed to do something better and they need to have, have the cutest poem and it had to be decorated the cutest. And so my mom and dad turned into psychos about neighbor gifts and that's really turned me off on neighbor gifts I fucking hate neighbors don't need to get him a gift don't need to do it Merry Christmas happy holidays see you next year is all you need to do 
What I would add to that, because all of that is one, at least in Utah, is 100% a fact. If you don't know your neighbors also, don't, you don't need to give them cookies. If you want to do it out of the kindness of your heart, sure. But I mm-hmm. also don't know what your house looks like. I don't want your cookies. They're mm-hmm. always stale. They're always crusty and dusty. And like, no one's really wanting that. But here's what I would also add to the situation. Stop bringing the cookies with the freaking kisses on top. They're not. Oh, yes. no, one li- <laughs> no one likes them. And if there's so much pressure of like <laughs> needing to give somebody something because they gave you something. And I mm-hmm. remember when I first had a house being like, oh my God, people are like dropping off cookies and I don't even know who they are necessarily or where they live. And now I felt all this pressure that because they gave me something, I had to give them something back. And so then I started like giving a couple people gifts and I was like, I don't even fucking know these people. Like they don't know me. I don't know them. Why do I feel this pressure that I need to drop off a goodie? And maybe it's out of the kindness of their heart. Maybe I'm sure there's people that are doing that. That's great. But it Mm -hmm. also causes a lot of stress and anxiety for people that aren't used to it when you don't have a relationship with them. And so maybe spend the effort doing something like that for people that have less. Mm -hmm. Maybe spend the effort doing something different instead of putting this extra pressure on somebody because you feel like you need to do something to a neighbor that you fucking hate because they mow their lawn at a different time than you or whatever it is. Like no one really enjoys their neighbors. Sometimes you get lucky and there's some that are neighbors that are your friends. If they're friends and you guys talk and you can rely on them for stuff, 1000%, give them fudge, give them a cookie. Don't make it the ones with the kisses on top. And don't add secret peppermint into your cookies. I hate that shit. We got some cookies last year and I was on my period and I was like, oh, cookies are like my go-to on my period. And I was so stoked, took a big old bite and it was peppermint in there. And I was pissed. Don't add secret peppermint to your shit and give it to your neighbors. Dude, I had a neighbor last year give me like a hot pad, a whole thing. And I was like, maybe it's from the dollar store. I don't know. But it put this pressure of like, damn, you spent like some money on me. Like how many neighbors did you buy this for? Who are we trying to impress here? We're not friends. Um, I don't know. It's just weird. Back to cookies. My sister made some bomb ass cookies over the Thanksgiving holiday. I ate so much cookie dough. Mm, it was yeah. like fluffy and full of air mm. and it was like a cloud of cookie dough in your mouth and I was like what's mm. going on like how did this happen where did you get this recipe she made them twice because Jaden didn't come to Thanksgiving and she wanted to send some home to him because chocolate chip is his favorite and I ate more of that dough the night before and I never actually tasted a cooked cookie and the other night mm. or the other day I posted for lunch that I ate cookies and milk I want you guys to know I ate cookies that day you know what? That's okay. And I really hope it wasn't Crystal. If so, I'm texting her right now and telling her to make those cookies. She said she was going to make cookies for her family Christmas. And I was like, yes, that's what you're bringing. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be the judge of these cookies. It was life-changing. And I don't Mm, actually enjoy chocolate chip cookies. Oh, I love them. I love them. Except for when they have have secret peppermint. You have to eat the dough too. Okay. Of course. Of course. Always. (laughs) All right, you guys. Well, we got off on a lot of tangents there, but I feel like they were good. (laughs) I feel like they were good tangents. So um, thank you so much for listening. Please like, rate, review. That really helps us out. Follow us on all the social medias and practice your gratitude this holiday season. Um, We will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Attitude of gratitude, baby. Bye.